Are you familiar with the 1990s American horror film called It? The freaky killer clown from that movie was modeled after me. My name is John Wayne Gacy Jr. I was born on March 17, 1942, to a Polish father and a Danish mother in Chicago, Illinois. My father's name is John Stanley Gacy. We'll refer to him as Stanley. Stanley was a skilled mechanic who worked his way up to the top. His philosophy of life was, don't lose to anyone and don't show your weaknesses. But he had a tumor in a part of his brain where surgery was impossible. His emotions were extremely unstable, and he would sometimes lose his temper suddenly, often taking out his anger on me and my mother. I was severely abused by Stanley when I was a child. You worthless scum! I told you so many times not to mess up like that! Ow, that hurts! He would verbally abuse me as well. He always blamed and hurt me both physically and mentally, calling me names from scum to loser and fag and saying, you're gonna be a homo. Because of this, I would have frequent anxiety attacks and heart problems. I didn't like being abused, and I endured the stress and physical discomfort to the point where I always fainted. Before I knew it, I was fainting repeatedly. You fainted again? You really are a scum. Yeah. I had to drop out of high school after changing schools four times between the age of 14 and 18 and being hospitalized for over a year. But after transferring to a vocational school and achieving excellent results there, my father's abuse stopped. That's great! Keep up the good work! I will! I tried to be even more liked by Stanley. I showed my support for the Democratic candidates that Stanley respected and took an exam to join the military, but I failed because of my medical history, and Stanley began to abuse me once again. You couldn't even get into the military! You really are worthless after all! Then, when I tried to have sexual intercourse with one of my female friends, I lost consciousness. I was 18 at the time. Whoa, hey, what's wrong? Are you alright? Stanley said to me, Looks like the fag in you came out. Eventually I was kicked out of the house, but I still loved my dad with all my heart. I kept working hard to earn his approval someday. But then when I was 20, I got in an argument with my dad when I asked to borrow his car. In the end, I told him I was going to refill the car's tires with air and drove away to Las Vegas instead. I worked part-time at a mortuary until my mother let me start living with her. Perhaps because of seeing a lot of corpses at work, I began to get strange feelings whenever I saw the corpses of little boys. Afterwards, I went back home to Chicago. After graduating from business college, I got a job as a salesman at a major shoe store. Great job, you're the top performer this month. Shortly after joining the company, I was appointed to area manager from a young age because of my outstanding sales performance. That's not the only thing I achieved. I was also a leading member of the United States Junior Chamber, where I got appointed to Director of the First Division for my excellent performance in selling savings vouchers at conferences. At the age of 22, I married a woman named Marilyn and moved with her to Iowa. There, I also managed three Kentucky Fried Chicken restaurants owned by my wife's father and achieved all-around success in business and local activities. But I took a turn in the wrong direction. Shortly before I got married, I unknowingly indulged in oral sex with a man I went to drink with. That was the moment when I became gay, as my father had said I would. I was tormented by deep fear and disgust. Three years later, I screwed up at last. I was 26. I lured Donald Voryuz, the 15-year-old son of one of the members of the Junior Chamber, to the basement of my house to watch a pornographic film with me and have a sexual relationship. I paid him money but still got prosecuted. I was arrested and charged with sodomy. Marilyn and I had to get divorced and I had to serve time for sexually abusing the boy. My sentence was for 10 years. 
I was released in just 16 months, however, for my model behavior in prison and returned to Illinois. But my father Stanley had died of cirrhosis of the liver in 1969 while I was serving time at the age of 27, and I lost my purpose in life. Half a year after being released, I was arrested again on suspicion of violently assaulting a boy. From fall of that year, I began boy hunting at parties. One night in January of the following year, I slept with a boy that I had picked up. When I woke up the next morning, I panicked in fear when I saw the boy standing with a knife in his hand and ended up getting in a fight with him and stabbing him to death. In actuality, the boy wasn't even trying to kill me. I murdered him due to my misunderstanding. From that point on, killing became a habit of mine. Afterwards, when I was 29 years old, I decided to dedicate myself to the remodeling business. I bought a house near Norwood Park in Chicago and started my own construction business. I worked hard to get my company on track and married a woman I had known since high school named Carol. On my days off, I volunteered at fundraising events as Pogo the Clown and became popular among the children. Pogo is the best! Yay! I started doing the whole Pogo the Clown thing because it allowed me to regress into childhood. As Pogo, I would show children magic tricks using handcuffs. Let me restrain your hands for a bit. Um, okay? I later used those handcuffs as tools for murder. I would lure lots of boys into the basement of my house, saying, Wanna watch some porn? After that, I handcuffed them to keep them from moving and raped them while threatening them with a weapon. Stay still! And then I killed them. I typically strangled my victims using a ballpoint pen and a rosary and slowly twisting it around their necks. After killing them, I buried their corpses underneath the floor and sprinkled quick lime on them. That was to mask the odor. In late 1975, Carol and I got divorced. After that, my number of victims skyrocketed. One day in 1978, a lieutenant police officer visited my house. I want to ask you a few questions about the missing Robert Peast. Sure, go ahead. He was investigating the whereabouts of Robert Peast, a 15-year-old boy who went missing on his way to an interview for a part-time job at my company. The lieutenant noticed various suspicious items in my house. A lot of gay pornography and used anal vibrators were also found. I had no choice left but to confess to the crimes. I killed 33 people. I buried 29 of them neatly underneath the floor and threw the other four into the river near my house. Most of the victims were male prostitutes. A few of the others were teenagers who worked part-time at my company. All of the corpses buried under the floor were rotten, and the methane gas they generated caused the police officers at the scene to experience severe dizziness and nausea. It, it smells so bad! Eventually, I was sentenced to death. I was executed by lethal injection, but didn't die immediately and suffered for 20 minutes before dying at the age of 53 on May 10th, 1994. It makes me laugh to think there's a movie based on me. I'll continue to live on inside people as fear. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.